uh, yeah. really love the, the this first season and uh, I know you're no stranger to otherworldly uh, work uh, uh, being Thanos and all uh, but but this was really grounded and still otherworldly in, in other ways uh, so, so I wanted to know uh, what kind of drew you to to this project in particular it's so interesting I'm just thinking just while you're talking and I'm hearing your accent that how Europeans will you know, react to this thing as opposed to Americans, because it, it has a European flair in that it's not straightforward, it's not typical, it's a little off camber, it's a little absurd. So it really, it's, great. it's interesting to me how I think Europe embraces that a lot, you know, at least in the, I've been watching a lot of foreign films recently. I saw The Worst Person in the World, have you seen that film? Yeah, it's great. But, oh my God, it's fantastic. And we saw that girl at the Oscars and it was like, I've got into like weird fan. I was like, oh my God, it's you, it's great. Um, anyway, uh, what drew me? Uh, I think a hybrid of of being, you know, when I was a kid, I read Ray Bradbury and Isaac Asimov and, you know, and I grew up on a ranch, on a horse ranch. And that's a very strong, very, uh, specific reality and then once I was kind of transported by these great writers um, it was super interesting to me and I, and I just liked what it did to me it was like what drugs are supposed to do but don't and uh, and so you know and it tainted kind of my reality and coming back from that momentary escape and and I like I like kind of con I've always liked contrasting things you know when I was working out in the desert in the series that I was doing young riders years and years 30 years ago you know I remember going out and playing like Pavarotti or you know Jose Carreras arias because there was something strangely contrasting about it and uh, and I've always enjoyed the kind of absurdity or whatever that alchemy you know, conjures in me on a personal level. So, yeah, and, and plus I was kind of looking for a Western. My buddy, Sam Shepard had died, you know, and this kind of harkened back to kind of his early writing. So there were a lot of things that kind of, you know, uh, intersected and, and it was this moment that this story came along and I said, this is something that I feel can sustain me for not only longer than it would take to make a movie, but for years. I don't know how many years, but, you know, I don't long enough where where I think we can it poses enough directions that I think the possibilities become limitless. I mean, honestly, how I feel about it is not necessarily how other people might feel about it, because I think he's you know, when, when you have a when you have a foundation that's precarious or based in fear or based on some kind of repression, that's not a real found foundation. You know, it's very fragile. So then something happens, you bring in something absurd or extraordinary that can be symbolized in any way. You know, you can call the whole whatever you want. And, 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 and suddenly you're confronted with your own fragile foundation. It makes for an interesting drama, but you see it everywhere. I could bring up many, 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 many things where it's an example in our own lives, contemporary lives of people who you thought were a certain way and then something happens and you go whoa I didn't see that coming you know and then you have drama and then you have opinion and then you have people's projections that are watching it and one person thinks it's one thing one person thinks it's another thing so I mean I know I'm being obtuse but the truth of the matter is is you know royal to me is somebody who is a shame-based character who's trying to keep a certain thing under wraps and that never proves successful in anybody's life even if you keep it under wraps your whole life maybe it's eating away at you the whole time and therefore you know 20 years of your life is taken away so it's very interesting to me that people resort out of fear and out of uh for lack of a better word out of an idealism you know, I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for, that's why when I saw that movie, King Richard, I was really, really taken by it because he's being perceived as an abusive parent. And yet it's up to you to figure out whether he's doing this because it's something in him that he didn't see realized, or if it's something in his children that he sees that nobody else sees that he's cultivating. And that's always the big question. That's the dramatic question. Are you doing it ultimately as a selfish thing? Or are you doing it as an altruistic thing? So I think, 
Royal, you know, at least at this point in this story is, is it's, it's very selfish and it's very fear-based, which I think creates good drama, hopefully. All right. Uh, so uh, you obviously feel like you uh, kind of hope there will be more seasons. And uh, when we spoke to Brian, he also said that he, have, he has plans for what, what that could be. Is, is that something he's shared with you, um, what, what that could end up being if this is as successful as I'm really hoping it will be? Yeah, we've talked about it. And, and, and yeah, he shares it. He's shared it with me. And then also I have my own opinions, because when you do a story like this, not, not even like this, any story that you're going to try and pull into a longer version of itself, um, things are revealed while you're shooting, things are revealed while you're editing, you know, and, and, and the story starts to kind of have its own life. And based on that own life, you start to react to it differently. So what you think might have, made have, might have worked or what your plan was before you started the first season for the, sex, for the second season may totally morph. And we go, we shouldn't focus on this. We should focus more on this. Whereas I think the family feud was a major focus in this in the, in the beginning of this season. But as the season transpired, we started to get more into the relationship between Imogen's character and, and Royal, you know what I mean? So it's fun when it starts to dictate itself. That's the difference between TV and film, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can react to that, to that voice. People have told me that grace is a given thing. And if you seek it, you'll find it. Yeehaw. You ever wonder if the world's not what you think it is? Strange times. What can you do?